Hey, Jim. You've been wondering where I've been. I've been busy. This is a follow-up video to my homemade wood stove. I've been working on this video for a few months. It's what it's like heating your workshop with a wood-burning stove. Is it worth it? I'll leave that up to you. Hello James, here we are at Garrett's Garage, where new records are being set. The interior temperature, compared to the outside temperature, is a new world record for free workshop heating. That's right, you heard me. Mr. Garrett heats his shop for free. Check out how. The first thing you have to do is go find some fuel. So luckily, I've got this private property here so I can collect any and all uh, firewood that I want to. And it takes a lot of firewood to keep that stove going. It just gobbles it up. Those uh, bundles of firewood you can get at the store for six bucks or whatever, that wouldn't even get the stove warmed up. So, it needs a lot of wood. So, any of this down stuff, I could pull up here. Uh, I guess I could use my winch. Or maybe there's some uphill from us. Ooh. Yeah, there's a few up here. Uh, oh, there's something up there on the road. Here's a pretty good one. It's fairly close to the road. The only issue is it's down behind this tree trunk, so I'm gonna have to pull it up just a little bit. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Usually, it's better to try and pick them like a dead tree that has fallen and is still up in the air somewhere. Those seem to be a little bit less rotten. Something like this, it's been on the ground for a long time. I'll have to see, but it might be so rotten that it's not even worth it. Yeah, it probably is, because all these cracks here, it's probably just mush. So, yeah, that looks pretty. Oh, no. It's kind of solid there. I don't know. We'll have to see. I might uh, grab this bad boy if it's not too mushy. All right, so I've got a chain on this long one here and I am going to pull my truck up much closer to where the chain is so I'll move the truck over this way and then attach the chain tight and then I'll pull the truck slowly forward and sharply go that way and it should pull this log backwards and a little bit up enough to clear this tree and then I can just pull it that way down the road. Well, that's working pretty good. Got this whole uh, long tree. It's probably about, I don't know, 30 feet long. So I'm gonna drag it all the way back to the workshop and that way I can uh, process it. And uh, I'll do that right there by the workshop where I've got electricity. Oh, squeaky brakes. Come to Papa. I've come back for that one that's down there on the left. I've got a chain around it. It's all kind of rotty. 
it's probably going to be infested with a bunch of insects and all sorts of bad stuff but hey it's a big log and it's kind of interfering interfering with this road so let's see what happens might be a little ambitious that thing is uh, what, 50 feet long <laughs> I bet that's too heavy for me to pull up here that's what we got some of these guys look reasonably good I'm have to come up here and get these so that very first tree that I drug down here, I cut it up using a chainsaw, and I think there's about 45 uh, pieces uh, here. So 45 cuts with a chainsaw. And of course you have to keep moving the log and jacking it up because you have to have it up off the ground in order to cut it. And I used, now I have a Husqvarna and a Poulon and the Husqvarna is great it's just these gas engine ones are noisy as all get out and they're kind of finicky so I like this thing I got it at Harbor Freight it was like 75 bucks it's electric so it's quiet it's surprisingly powerful and it's just so much easier on me than these noisy gas engine ones I mean if you have to use them out in the forest you have to use them but that's why I drag the log down here where there's electricity so the next step in order to get this ready to go is any of the bigger ones need to be split and then it needs to be dried. I have used this moisture meter and it has determined that my logs here are running around 35 to 40 percent moisture which is way too damp dry wood is your friend when you're using it for a fire so i need to get the moisture level of this wood down to around 10 percent in order to make it work good in my fire here's a nice little exercise area this is my log splitter that i got of course from harbor freight and it's 10 ton unit and it's got like a high range. This pump makes the ram move quite a bit each stroke. And then this is the low range where it moves just a little bit. And it still is a lot of exercise. Oh, oh. oh there we go. <laughs> then we can go back to high range to finish splitting it apart. So you have to do that. And we have 45, uh, out of all those logs, the 45 or 50 logs, we probably have about 35 that need to be split. Some of them need to be split multiple times. Okay, I just split this one and you can see how wet it is on the inside. 37, try over here. <clears throat> Thirty-three. So these are definitely too wet to use without drying them. So that brings us right to here, where you got to make sure that if you're going to do this at home, that your wife is okay with you bringing in some wood, because what I'm doing here is I am baking these at about 300 and I'm giving them about eh, maybe an hour and you can see on the ends where they're starting to crack and that's how you can kind of tell 
when your wood's starting to dry out just right. So as an example, I'm going to grab one of these pre-cooked hunks of wood. Uh, let's grab this guy and we're going to call him Woody. Just so we can keep track of him, we're going to mark him. All right. I don't know, is it I-E? Why? I'm not sure. For him, it's Woody. So what we're going to be looking for is... Oops. Anyway, what we're going to be looking for is this. Pay attention to all this. You have a small crack here, small crack here. Currently, Woody's at like 36 or 37 percent moisture. So we're going to put Woody in the stove and we're going to bake him for uh, an hour or two. And again, make sure if you're doing this at home that your wife it consents to you putting anything like Woody in her stove. What we're going to be looking for is cracking. As this log starts to dry, there will develop a bunch of cracks here. And that's how you can actually tell when you're looking at a piece of wood, whether or not it's ready to go in your fireplace. <clears throat> Before, after. Okay. Okay, there's Woody. Look at all those big cracks. That tells me that these logs are pretty dry. Yay. Let me get my uh, oven mitts so I can take these out of here. Okay, he's still very hot, so I'm going to put on some insulated gloves, and then I'm going to use my log splitter and crack them open, and then I'm going to use my moisture meter and see what we still have inside. Hopefully we won't get any steam or anything, and uh, I'm... I'm aiming for somewhere between 10 and 20 percent. Hmm. I see lots of steam coming off. I don't know if that's going to show on film, but lots of steam. I just did the test and we're at 22% right at the very center. So still a little bit more damp than I would like, but fair enough. I think that will burn pretty well, way better than 35 or 40%. So I just cut some more. And this stuff has been out in the rain and all of that, so I'm about to put it in the oven. And this guy, oh boy, he reads in the 90% range. And the probes go in pretty easy. 95. <laughs> okay, so we'll see what I can. I'll bake this guy for maybe half an hour and see what happens. So yes, it can get down to seven degrees and your homemade wood stove can still keep your shop warm. Uh, all that stuff about drying wood in your stove. Yeah, don't do that. It's a huge fire hazard. 
it's a bad idea and uh, you have to just be super careful, have fire extinguishers everywhere, but other than that, just don't do it. Anyway, uh, you might have been able to figure out that there's been some stuff happening around here and I did get a new car, so I'll tell you about it soon. Thanks for watching.